Take it away. Thank you. And I want to thank my coaches and all my teammates and my parents and all the fine citizens of the wonderful country that I represented. Whose idea was this? <laughs> Cute. Yeah, I slap this guy. My name is Carl Scalic. I am uh, with Blue Pike. I am Blue Pike Farm. <laughs> Um, Blue Pike Farm is the first farm started in Cleveland in the 21st century. It's not the biggest farm. It's not the old farm. Uh, as far as I know, uh, nobody's corrected me on this. I'm the first one started in the city in this century. I have approximately uh, one acre of virgin backfill that I'm uh, working. And unlike uh, real farmers like Larry, um, who probably has at least one tractor and a plow and some other kinds of stuff. An employee, he's got five. Five. One, two, he's got five. I have zero tractors. But I do have a plow. So if you ever need to borrow a two-bottom plow in the city, I got one. Uh, I grow the usual suspects, that is to say, tomatoes and bell peppers and Swiss chard and zucchini, and eggplant, and yada, 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 yada. Uh, but I try to grow different varieties, uh, primarily open heirloom and um, open pollinated and heirloom varieties. I tell my customers that if you find it, if you can readily find it at Giant Eagle, I'm probably not interested in growing it. So we do purple carrots. Um, we do yellow ones too and, and orange ones. Because, um, it's not that I don't respect this. I didn't mean to do that. It, it slipped. Um, but uh, I try and do things with weird names or uh, unusual sources. So for instance, I'm, I'm in the St. Clair Superior neighborhood on East 72nd Street. There's a tomato floating around out in the open pollinated thing. It's called a soldaki tomato. And if you've ever worked through a seed catalog, you might have stumbled across it. It's also sometimes known as the Cleveland tomato. Well, the soldaki family actually grew up in the St. Clair Superior neighborhood. Great great grandfather came over from Poland, they settled in Cleveland, and so I grow Sadaki tomatoes only because there's a, you know, not only are they good, but there's also a particular neighborhood connection with that, uh, with that variety. Um, where do I see the farm in 20 years? Well, if they move the port over to 55th Street, what I see is that the building just to the north of me and the property that I'm on are going to be probably a warehouse and distribution facility. But then that fits into my 20 year plan because in 20 years I'm either going to be dead or if I'm not lucky I'm going to be in an old folks home uh, with a colostomy bag or you know, a, a big supply of the pans and a wheelchair. Uh, my, I'm actually a little more short term than that. I'm trying to get through this season, um, which hasn't really started yet, although I was out a little bit today, sort of like walking through the snow. Um, so I, if we get through this year, I'll be, uh, I'll be another happy camper. I'm actually trying to earn a living at this. I'm trying to do this full time. So this farming gig, this is my day job. Now, what do I need? Larry answered it all already. We need more customers. Could use a little more time. Personally, I could use a younger body, but you know, there's not much I can do about that. And what I need is for you folks to step up to the plate. Now, about three or four years ago at an E4S food meeting, Carrie Moore stood in front of the group, much like I am today, and, and threw out the 10% challenge. And as I recall, if I paraphrase this correctly, uh, the idea was to take 10% of your food budget and commit to buying fresh local food for 10% of your total food dollars. And probably a couple of you have done that. How many of you guys go to farmers markets regularly? Hey, how many of you are CSA members? Uh, okay, that's good. Now, so here's the challenge this year. The 10%, that's, you know, that's like the low-hanging fruit. This year's challenge for all of those of you who are regular farmers market participants, I want you to commit to take a friend, a neighbor, or a relative, a co-worker, somebody you don't like, I don't care who it is, but you're going to take them to the farmer's market once a month for five months at a minimum. Once in June, July, August, September, and October, okay? And then just to kick it up a little bit, you're going to invite them over to your place, or if it's a hot chick and you're trying to hook up with it, you're going to offer to take the, this is actually good for you young guys, they love guys who know how to cook. 
You're going to take that food that you buy at the market, and you're going to do a backyard barbecue and show them how to prepare kale, Swiss chard, weird eggplant, stuff like they've never seen before in their whole entire life would never would have bought on their own. Okay? That's the first thing. For those of you who have already done that, sign up with the Farmer's CSA. From my perspective as a farmer businessman, I think the best way you can support me and other farmers like me is to find a CSA and hook up with them for the season. 100% of your CSA dollar goes to that farmer. To go to a farmer's market, there's more time involved, you've got to pay the fee, yada, yada, yada. Find a CSA and get committed and hook up with a CSA somewhere in northeastern Ohio. There's a ton of them out there. Um, if you're interested in uh, staying in touch with Blue Pipe Farm, the, web, the email address is pretty simple, blue.pipe.farm at gmail.com. And there's some flyers floating around, and et cetera, et cetera. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Carl. And thank you for all your support. <laughs>